So, um, good evening, everyone. Um, how are you doing today? Yeah, doing good? Great? Awesome? Yeah, all right, that's the spirit. So, <laughs> um, so this is what I'm going to talk about today, Samarine Forms Custom Renderers. Uh, well, a uh, little introduction to myself. Uh, I'm Udara Alves, and fun fact, Singaporeans find it very hard to pronounce my name. So if you happen to be one of them, it's all cool. I get that a lot. So uh, I've got some, uh, well, I'm, I'm here working in Singapore working as a Samarin developer. And, uh, and I must admit, I'm a crazy enthusiast in Samarin and got some mad, some, uh, some mad love for mobile development. And of course, Microsoft for the win. Um, and I'm, I'm not much of a grown-up, just a 23-year-old kid uh, causing trouble here and there. And uh, well, I, in fun times, uh, during my uh, leisure times, I go on nature, wo nature walks, adventures, running and stuff like that. And um, yeah, so today we are going to go through a little journey during this presentation. So this is the journey that I'm going to take you guys through. Uh, first of all, we are going to talk about what Samarin and Samarin Forms is all about. Actually, Sohel gave a really good introduction to it, but so in, I wouldn't go much into details on that. Um, then I'm going to tell you guys a little story about a Samarin Forms developer. That's going to be fun. All right, uh, then uh, of course we're going to talk about uh, custom renderers and uh, I'm, going to I'm going to show you guys how to create a sample cu uh, custom renderer. And uh, of course at the end I'm going to walk you guys through some very important facts that you need to keep in mind when you uh, create custom renderers. All right, so let's get started, right? Uh, well, Samarin is, uh, of course, it's great. All right, lets you create, um, you know, mobile applications using our good .NET uh, uh, framework, and um, in, and also, most importantly, it gives you native performance, native look and feel, just by uh, developing from Samarin. Um, and it's got uh, true cross-platform uh, capabilities. And uh, next, uh, let's talk about Samarin Forms. Samarin Form is more like the uh, true cross-platform extension of Samarin. Uh, like, uh, if you take a look at it, um, Samarin Forms is like the approach of Samarin, where they want to uh, create this concept, right ones run everywhere and not suck. And they have delivered it exactly as it is. And uh, Samarin Forms, what different? What this differs from, what uh, Samarin Forms differs from normal native Samarin is that Samarin Forms has a shared UI layer, so that allows you to share almost up to 100% uh, of your code base among the three platforms. So no, lo no more separation of uh, the UI layer between the native uh, uh, levels. Uh, now, some people are a little confused about Samarin and Samarin Forms. Let me br put it this way. All right, uh, with, uh, with Samarin, no, with ordinary Samarin, uh, you get the sh shared C sharp background, uh, sorry, back end, uh, but you still have to implement the native UI separately for each platform, as you can see in the left hand side diagram. And now, if you take a look at the right side, you can see there's a shared UI code across the three, uh, three platforms. Uh, sorry, three uh, mobile uh, platforms, um, and uh, in the native level has uh, narrowed down. So in that way, you get to share almost up to 100% code, uh, share the code between the three uh, uh, platforms. Now, if you're still confused, uh, okay, I don't remember why I put two ones. Uh, okay, anyways, uh, if you take a look at this side, uh, that's uh, the normal native uh, approach where you get to share up to 70 to 80 percent uh, code base with uh, separate UI implementations. And Samarin Forms, you get the UI layer as well, which fills up the next 20 to 30 percent. Um, so yeah, I hope that clears any uh, confusion. Now we go to the story time. All right, so there's this developer uh, who started working on a mobile application, all, all being all enthusiastic about Samarin Forms. And uh, so he starts off developing, right? And he's given all the UI sketches by the UX uh, lead and so on. So he starts implementing with the uh, norm ordinary UI controls that's given with the Samarin Forms uh, layer. And he manages to implement the basic UI uh, design. But then slowly, he gets into the complex UI implementation uh, of the designs, right? Then um, 
uh, having a little confusion, he, uh, actu he actually starts going through the available properties of these UI controls in order to fine tune the design uh, as complex as the UX uh, lead has given him. But unfortunately, he looks up and down here and there. He cannot find enough uh, properties to customize the UI according to his uh, complex UI design requirement. So, oh boy, he's in trouble. He realizes that using Xamarin Forms default controls is unable to uh, optimize the UI exactly as he needs. So, well, any solutions for this? Well, sadly, uh, that's, he's, he's in a lot of trouble, right? Now, <laughs> he could actually go back to the native development and of course he'll have to go through the trouble of implementing the same UI in each, uh, all three platforms separately. That's not an option at all. So what do we do? So ladies and gentlemen, let me tell you, this is where Xamarin Forms custom renderers comes for your rescue. All right, let me explain. Now, first of all, let me tell you a little bit about how Xamarin Forms UI rendering is taking place. Now, um, every single control that Xamarin Forms provides you has a uh, renderer uh, that um, you know, associates with the Xamarin Forms level and the native level of the mobile platform, where it maps every single property of the uh, Xamarin Forms controls to the native level properties. So that's, uh, that, that's why we get the actual uh, native performance and native looks and feel through uh, Xamarin uh, development, right? So in my opinion, this uh, Xamarin Forms, uh, this rendering process is more like the magic behind Xamarin Forms. Now, if you take a look at this diagram here, uh, that's, that's, uh, the, you can see the entry control here, right? Where, which is something like the text view in Xamarin Forms. So you can see how it goes down through these renderers that Xamarin provides and they get con gets converted down to the native level controls as in like in iOS you get the you know, UI text field at the end of the rendering and edit text user control and in Android and Windows phone respectively, right? So next. Um, this, now, Xamarin being such a good guy, they have allowed us developers to override this uh, rendering process, tap into this rendering process and customize it according to our needs and requirements. Right? Look what a good guy Samarin is. Now, <laughs> thanks to that, we developers get to uh, customize the uh, default properties and the behaviors of these Samarin forms control uh, with, with, uh, by tapping into the rendering process for each and every platform according to our requirements. Now, um, what is a custom renderer, right? Now, this, now, in order to tap into the uh, Xamarin Forms uh, rendering process, we need to create custom renderers by uh, subclassing the base renderers that Xamarin has provided us. And by doing that, we get to create uh, custom renderers and uh, you know, tap into the rendering process to uh, edit the uh, properties and behaviors of those controls. Now, well, why do we need them? You already have the answer uh, to, you know, uh, customize the controls from the native level itself. Now, if you take a look at this diagram here, uh, here we have control, uh, created a um, custom entry, uh, which is my entry base uh, that derives from the entry control of Xamarin Forms, and it goes through our custom renderer, my entry renderer, and goes down to the base renderer level. So at this level, we get to uh, customize it as we want before passing into the base base level base class uh, renderer level so that's how the whole rendering process and custom renderers work um, so now how to create a custom renderer it's, it's very simple a lot of people are very you know very scared of this uh, whole custom renderers thing because they think it's very complex in my opinion no it's super simple because what you need to do is first of all the first step you create a, a custom control in Xamarin Forms level by subclassing a uh, you know an ordinary uh, you know default custom sorry default Xamarin Forms control. You create a custom control and then you consume that control that uh, that custom control in uh, Xamarin Forms project your normal UI. Uh, then after that, as, as the third step or the final step, 
you implement the custom renderer in the native project level. So it's that simple. It's not very hard. So now, time for the demo. And uh, as Sohel said, uh, I'm going to show you guys in all three uh, platforms, hopefully. Uh, all right. So what we are going to do here, uh, all right, now you can see I have a sample, uh, you know, uh, Samarin Forms project opened up, which has a, a normal a label and a button, right? Now, if we run this, first of all, let's run this in Android. And uh, yeah, let's give it a little time. Do I talk too fast? So sorry, guys. Uh, yeah, it's just a habit, a bad old habit. Uh, all right. Oh, so. There we go. This is the normal uh, view we get, uh, normal output we get by the default Sam Forms control, right? Now, if we take a look at the iOS, we set the uh, towards the iOS project and we run it. Okay, good. <sighs> Come on. Oh, yeah. There we go. So that's how it's rendered in, uh, uh, in iOS. Now, let's take a look at Windows Phone. All right. All right. There goes Windows Phone. Now, what I'm going to do is uh, all right, now imagine my UX, develop, uh, my UX lead asks me to make this button's corners even more curved than, the, uh, than how it's normally rendered in these three platforms. If you can see in the, uh, pr uh, in the normal, uh, wait, uh, I forgot to tell that, wait, in Android, all right, let's set it to Android and I'll show you. Oh yeah, see, uh, it it has the it it oh, this bar normal uh, the default button has uh, squared corners, right? So uh, what I'm going to do is make these cor uh, corners even more curved, uh, more, more towards like an ellipse uh, ellipse corners. So in order to do this, I'm going to implement a custom renderer. So uh, what I'm going to do is first of all the first step. Here we go. Uh, create a new class. Uh, Let's call this uh, corner, uh, no, uh, corner button, I oh, know it, well, that's a nice name. Oh yeah, round corners button. Let's call this round corners button. All right, we're gonna create a button that has round corners. Uh, I'm gonna make this public. And I'm, we now, so as a first step, we need to uh, inherit our custom control from uh, default Samarin button, Samarin Forms button. So that is button, as you can see, Samarin Forms button. There we go. We subclass it from there, and that is done. So now we can straight away go ahead and consume this custom control in our in our, in our UI implementation. So there we go. Boom. Sorry, font size. I okay. Oh yeah, yeah. Wait, let me. Sorry, guys. One twenty. Let's put it like one thirty. Is it is it good now? Oh, one. I'll put it, increase a little bit more. Fifty. One fifty. Yeah, that's good, right? Yeah. Okay. And oh, alignment. Come on. Oh, nice. All right. So I'm gonna. Use the same properties here. Why not? Uh, and click this normal button. No, uh, let's call it curved. Uh, no, rounded corners button. Rounded corners button. Okay, there we go. So now the first step is done. The second step is done. We consumed it in uh, our UI. And next, what I'm going to do is the last step that is implementing in the native. Uh, level, creating the custom renderer in the native level. So in order to do this, you need to uh, dive down to the native project, native Samarin uh, project level, that is, uh, you know, uh, Samarin.android. Here we go. We create a new class, 
called. Now, the usual naming sta uh, standard of custom renderers is that you take the name of our custom control button and you add the renderer keyword at the end. So here we go, we'll call it round corners button. And as a suffix, you add a uh, renderer keyword. That's more like the standard, you know? Yeah. Uh, all right, that is done. Public, I'm gonna make this need to be visible. And yeah, so uh, so now, if you remember, I, I told you guys earlier, um, we need to, when we create a custom render, we need to subclass it from the uh, Samarin default renderers, right? So in this case, we need, as this is a, since this is a button, we need to uh, subclass this custom uh, render from uh, button renderer that is the default renderer class for Samarin forms button, button renderer. There we go. Hope you can see. Yeah. That is done. And I'm going to do the same for on iOS and Windows Phone also. There we go. Now iOS is done. Let's go to Windows Phone, and uh, I'm not gonna you know, demonstrate about uh, the normal Windows and Universal Windows uh, uh, platforms because it's almost the same. But and we are a little out of time right now, so uh, yeah. And we create the custom render on Windows Phone as well. Public render extend from the button. Renderer, oh uh, yeah, be good. All right, now we we have created the custom renderers basic uh, skeleton. Uh, now before I go ahead, I'm gonna walk you guys through some in very important facts that you need to keep in mind uh, when you implement uh, cu custom renderers. So the first one is. Uh, now, uh, actually, I'm, I'm going to uh, go. I mean, I'm, I'm going to get back to the code while I go through these facts, so you get a better understanding about each point and how to do it at, this, at the same st at the same time. So, whenever you create a custom renderer, you need to uh, export it and register it with the uh, with the Samarin Forms rendering process. If you don't do it, then uh, Samarin uh, would not recognize your custom renderer, and it will go ahead with the uh, default base class renderer. Now, let's do that in our project. Um, so how you uh, export your renderer is that you call the assembly and you use the export uh, renderer and you pass in the type name of uh, you pass in the type name of your uh, custom control that is this one the rounded corners button. Import it, and then you need to pass in the the renderer name. All right, that's good. Okay, there we go. And we need to do this in all three platforms as we need to implement this this uh, renderer in all three platforms. Okay, import of. Okay, that's good. All right, now to the next point. Uh, so whenever a custom renderer uh, starts its execution, w the first method that gets fired is the on element changed method. This method is wh where you know uh, where, where we need to uh, access all the properties that uh, and uh, you know create uh, get, I mean do all our customizations however we want to. And also something to be noted is that this method uh, uh, this method uh, consumes some very important. Um, parameter that is called element changed event args, which has two important properties: new element and old element. So, what what these properties are about is that the new element property contains a reference to the Samarin forms level control, and uh, sorry, 
the new element um, uh, uh, gives you a reference to the, um, the, the summary forms control that is that this uh, renderer uh, is, pre is currently attached to. Like now, if you take a look at the old element, it uh, gives you a reference to the renderer that this uh, that the summary forms control was attached to. So there's a distinct difference there. So whenever this this matters because whenever you uh, create a renderer and you uh, st implement uh, you know uh, like uh, events and stuff like that, you need to. Uh, keep an eye on these two properties and do the proper subscribing and uns unsubscribing of those events. So in order to, you know, of course, to avoid memory leaks, we don't need to, uh, you know, keep references to the objects that are not being used anymore. So let's do that in, uh, implement that in our project, in our custom renderer. We go, I'm just going to take this right here and let's start overriding. There you go. It's good. Now, usually, this this is the place where you need to do all your customizations and everything that according to your requirement. And um, let's do the same here. Override one element changed. Okay. Good. That is good. All right, now we have overridden the method that we need to uh, write our custom customizations on. Um, so next, uh, all right, now some, a, a custom renderer is more like a middle guy in between the Xamarin forms level and the native level. So this middle guy has hooks for the both sides uh, for, for the same uh, uh, the Xamarin forms and the native level. So uh, you, so this uh, normal uh, base class, uh, you know, uh, a base class renderer ha always has these two important properties that is called element and the control. This, the element property provides you a reference to the Xamarin forms level control and the control property provides you a hook to the native level uh, control, the native level control that this renderer is going to convert that same forms control uh, to the native level, right? So whenever you do the customizations, you need to use this uh, property and inject whatever the customizations you need straight away access the properties uh, that accordingly, uh, your, according to your requirement. So let's go ahead and try that, that out in our project. Um, okay, so what you do here is you need to, oh, before that, I need to do something. Yeah, I uh, ho hope you remember about the new element and the old element. So I'm going to implement that here first uh, first thing. And uh, let's see, get, take the, the oh, it, it. okay. There we go. You need to check whether the E element is present or not. If it is present, well, well, it, according to, I mean, uh, uh, during this demo, we are not going to use any uh, events implementation here. We're just going to implement, uh, implement a uh, customization of the UI. Therefore, I'm not going to do anything, any uh, of those events here. So let's just say uh, subscribe to the events stuff. Okay. And well, if not, then you need to check for the old element's presence. Old element. See whether that's available or not. If it gives you the old elements, then you need to unsubscribe. Okay, all right. That's how it is done. And all right, now let's take a look at the control. Uh, before you uh, go into the controls properties, you need to check whether the control is available or not. And do a little check there. And this is where inside this uh, condition, only you need to uh, do all the required customizations. So I'm not going to go through the whole code. So I'll just get the my uh, from my sample project here. Um, that is. All right. Uh, okay, let's get this one. Create the gradient drawable. 
Okay, so if you are familiar with Android development, um, the way to uh, set a button's background is to, by creating a gradient drawable, right? So here we have, uh, I have created a gradient drawable where it, uh, um, it sets the ra corner radius to the uh, amount, I mean, uh, to the value we have given, and so on, the background color, and stuff like that. Now, if you take a look at this code here, uh, you can see at the set color method, I have uh, gained the access to the element property, which is the Samarin forms level. Now, if this what 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 happens here is that this uh, this code uh, this piece of code gains access to the background color property of the Samarin forms level. Here, remember we set it here background color property, and it gains access to that and it set it to the native level uh, custom properties that we are creating here. Now that's how you use the uh, control and the element. Now, in order to set this this uh, gradient drawable to the uh, to the native control that we are customizing here, what you need to do is you get gain access to the control uh, property. You set background. As you can see, the control uh, property has all the required uh, native level uh, uh, methods and properties, whatever available for this Android native button. So. We go set background and uh, uh, just as a normal uh, Android application, you set up the gradient robo. There we go. All right. Now it should work like a charm. There we go. Let's see. Okay, meanwhile it's compiling since we are out of time. Uh, I'm gonna get the same code. Oh, it's already done. All right, there we go. As you can see, the new uh, custom renderer button that we created, we have, we, it has curved corners. Uh, so yeah, looks better. All right, now that is Android. Let me show you the same on iOS next. Um, there we go. Boop. All right. So always keep in mind you need to keep an eye out for the for the new element and the old element properties if you're uh, you know uh, using any events stuff like that. All right. So uh, in the next Windows Phone Windows Phone code is a little bit longer, so it's going to take a long time to code the whole thing from scratch. I would rather. Yeah. Here we go. And. Okay, so here I need to show you guys something. Uh, now, if you take a look at this, uh, you can see uh, in, in, inside the, oh wait, let me copy the method, the actual customization method. Perfect. Okay, so in, in the Windows Phone renderer, what we do is we check for the old elements presence and the new elements presence, and we are using the, the method, uh, the Samarin Forms level event here. So, and, and we are subscribing to the, uh, and unsubscribing to that event based on the uh, presence of these two properties. And we are, co and inside this method only, we are doing the required changes. So, uh, these customizations depends on each, each platform's uh, controls behaviors. It first so you need to have some native level uh, you know uh, look around knowledge uh, in order to do e uh, extended customizations however so I hope you get the un get the point of the new element and the old element properties well that is done and let's see how this gets uh, executed all right on Windows phone here we go oh, come on There we go. Custom renderer successful on Windows Phone. And let's take a look at iOS. All right. There we go. Come on. 
we don't have the whole day, come on. When <laughs> All right, here we go. It's good. Oh yeah, there we go, look how pretty it is. Uh, so that's the custom render uh, um, implementation. Hope you get the, get the idea. And don't worry, even though it, this seems pretty confusing for now, give it a try, play, play around with it, and you can do awesome stuff. Now, um, yeah, the next point that you need to keep in mind is that, uh, like, now let's say a scenario like this. What if you, what if you wanted to get rid of the, uh, the default uh, native control that, that's given through the base class render, through the custom renderer, right? Uh, well, and create your own native control and use it uh, to, uh, in our custom, con custom renderer. All right, wait, that seems pretty complex. And uh, let me give you a little example. Uh, so let's say you need to have a text box with a background, uh, you know, shadow with it. So what in, in something like iOS, what you do is you uh, get the UI text view, your text field, and you get another UI view that uh, that's going to hold the background uh, shadow. So and you put the, put those views together, and you form a one native uh, one native control in order to get that effect. So in in scenarios like that, you need to override the natively provided element, right? So to do to do that you can use access the set native control met method that's available in uh, render in custom renderers and directly put your own custom uh, native control and override uh, the uh, defaultly given custom uh, defaultly given native control. So. Yeah, um, and also keep in mind, since you're overriding the default given uh, native control, uh, you need to handle all the events and the behaviors manually all by yourself. So, yeah, so as long as you stick to those uh, control and um, uh, element properties that's defaultly given by Xamarin forms, you're good to go. But if you're going to even more deeper level customizations, you need to keep in mind to handle all the events and the behaviors. Um, and, the, and last, but this is also very important, some uh, fact to keep in mind. Um, let's say you need to uh, create something, some very, very complex uh, uh, customization uh, control, right? So, in, and in this process, you might probably want to create your own base class renderer. So, what you do is uh, now, is that po even possible? Like, right? I mean, like we've been using button renderers and label renderers the whole time. That's defaultly provided by Xamarin. And now, now we are we want to create our own renderer and uh, and over, uh, override the entire rendering process. That is possible. Yes, it is possible. Even though it's not very um, you know, uh, recommended by Samarin. Uh, uh, what you need to do is you need to create, uh, you need to uh, use the view re default view renderer that's provided by Samarin and uh, uh, use the generic view renderer and pass in the custom control and the native control that's going to associate with your own renderer. So, yeah, there you go. If just something to keep in mind uh, if you ever come, uh, come across such a requirement, it is possible to create your own base renderer. Um, well, now that's been said, uh, this is something I really need to mention, guys. Sam for Samarin Forms uh, mobile development, you don't need so much of an in-depth mobile uh, knowledge and experience. But it's quite, uh, in scenarios like Samarin uh, custom, custom renderers, it's pretty uh, useful. So if you're someone who's looking into uh, develop, uh, looking to move towards Samarin Forms mobile development, I would suggest that you take, a, uh, at the same time, just take a little look around of the native uh, platforms that are available. Just a little look around uh, while you're moving towards Xamarin. It's going to be very useful. So that's a little sharing of the experience and wisdom. Uh, next. Uh, <clears throat> all right. Now we have arrived at the last part of our presentation. That is uh, things, to rem uh, th things to keep in mind before you decide to go towards uh, custom renderer implementation. Now. If you, I mean, uh, uh, this is something very important. You need to think twice before you move towards custom render implementation. That is because, like, uh, something, some untold truth about uh, custom renderers is that it's a little bit process intensive. 
and uh, and I know it's very tempting to go for custom renderers whenever you when you get too comfortable with it. I experience that myself all the time. And uh, but uh, try your best to solve your requirement from the Xamarin Forms level itself. So you save a lot of resources and uh, you know um, processing time. And also, it's some old, you can try out the alternatives by sub subclassing the uh, default controls in the Xamarin Forms level, try to uh, put all the stuff together in Xamarin Forms level itself, or else you can try out Xamarin Forms effects that's, uh, that's been released last few months, uh, something introduced new. And uh, it's something, really, uh, something similar to custom renderers, but it's very more simplified and less process intensive. So always uh, look for the alternatives before moving towards renderers. Um, now, uh, whenever you create a custom renderer, you need to focus on the reusability as much as possible. Because, uh, I mean, uh, as, as I mentioned earlier, it's uh, very clear that some rend uh, custom renderer is process intensive. So uh, keep, uh, try your best to keep it, as, uh, uh, keep it low as much as possible. Uh, the number of uh, renderers that you use in your application and uh, uh, try to merge the possible uh, renderers together and use uh, less number of renderers in your, uh, in your application. So if uh, as such an example, let's say you have a image renderer that renders an image control uh, as a circle and you have another renderer that uh, you know, renders the image's corners, image's squared corners as uh, curved corners. Now, well, why don't you just merge those together and keep on keep only maintain only one renderer? It's you you can do that. It's the same num, same type of properties that you are using for the both renderers. So try to keep it uh, try to unify as much as possible uh, behaviors and properties to one renderer. So yeah, that's something to keep in mind. And the last thing, last point to keep in mind when you're uh, implementing custom renderers is that. Before you move towards uh, rendering renderers implementation, try to take a look at the uh, uh, render hierarchy, starting from the Xamarin Forms level towards the uh, actual native control level. Go through the properties that are available in the native level in all three platforms before you uh, decide to go for custom renderers and uh, see whether it is possible to achieve your requirement through uh, the renderer, they are, they are, um, by, by doing that, you'll have a better understanding of how you are going to implement more, more efficiently. So now, after that, uh, that uh, that's being said, we've reached the conclusion of uh, our uh, little journey. So, um, well, something to uh, mention here is that Xamarin Forms uh, custom renderers is extremely important in uh, Xamarin uh, Forms development, Xamarin Forms mobile development. Uh, in my opinion, Xamarin Forms custom renderers is more like the magic behind the actual awesomeness of Xamarin because it gives you the uh, it, it gives you an uh, ultimate you know flexibility and customizations for your mobile applications and. Guys, it's nothing to be scared about uh, custom renderers. It, once you get used to it and you start playing around with it, you're going to love them. And they're, they're going to be very, very useful. And uh, yeah, keep in mind, uh, custom renderers are there to rescue you. OK? So uh, and also keep in mind the important facts that I uh, explained today. And uh, yeah, that will give you a better, uh, you know, uh, understanding and uh, uh, about how to implement more efficiently and effectively. So, well, that brings to the end of our presentation, the journey today uh, during the presentation. And uh, thank you so much for listening. And don't forget to check out my blog. I uh, post uh, all these custom renderer implementations almost every week and uh, a lot of interesting stuff there. So, yeah, thank you so much for uh, listening. And thank you for the organizers for the opportunity. Thanks, guys. All right. Right. All right.